Today we're going to show you how to exercise for the sport of archery. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery. This is my wife, Heather. She's a physical trainer as well as a massage therapist, so she's going to really help us today with the uh, exercises for the sport of archery. Don't be afraid to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. This channel has a ton of information including form, tuning, and now exercises as well to help make you a better archer. You're watching the Jay Kaminsky YouTube channel. So one, I lived at the Olympic Training Center and finally cut my teeth when it came to actually working out to actually make myself a better archer. I always did a full body workout. So meaning I didn't do split workouts like Heather likes to do split workouts. Uh, that means that you focus on like a half of a body, either your lower half or your upper half. And speaking from experience when it comes to shooting, many people don't like to work out uh, during archery season specifically because they believe that it's going to affect the way that they shoot the next few days or at a tournament, right? So I always recommend to do a full body workout. So that means you're not focusing on one specific type or part of your body. So that way you're not extra sore the next couple days. You just have an overall body soreness. Many people, if you do recover properly, uh, you won't have any issues to worry about. So I think that there is some value in being a little sore after a workout and then going to the range and shooting. Yes. Um, one, because when you get off a plane or if you've been sitting in a car for a long time, you're a little sore and being able to practice shooting through uh, that soreness, I think it has some value. Now, debilitating soreness where you can't like sit down or stand up or extend your arm fully, um, that's not quite the, the value that we're looking for, but a little soreness is okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like I was getting into that, so I'm glad she said that <laughs> because I always use that as a training aid because when I fly halfway across the world, or you're sleeping in a different bed that's not yours, it's hard, soft, no pillows or not, you know, you gotta learn how to deal with being uncomfortable. And when it's a tournament and everything's on the line and you've been practicing for that specific tournament, you just have to deal with it, you know? And, and ultimately, everybody has to deal with it, so all you have to do is deal with it better than the next guy. Right. And if you train that way and expose yourself to adverse situations, you'll be a better archer in the long run. So right. I use this as a training aid, very important. So next we need to talk about how long the workout should be and then how often as well. So each workout should take roughly 20 to 40 minutes to complete plus a warm up. So meaning you, you still have to properly warm up and you sh still should cool down properly as well. Um, but I found that if I did a exercise or a workout that was longer than that 40 minute window or approaching an hour, then I started to have diminishing returns where I, I was just too fatigued and you know generally I worked out after I shot so after spending eight hours on the range especially when I was doing it full time an extra hour in the gym is a whole lot of extra load on my body and I just found that I didn't quite recover if I extended further than that. That makes sense. Yeah and then this way it gives you time to truly focus on the actual workout you're doing and give it all of your effort as opposed to just going through the motions and really not benefiting from it. Right. So next point would be how often should you work out? I've had a lot of questions asking me that. <clears throat> I suggest three days a week off season, two days a week on season. So what's your recommendation if somebody shoots um, indoor season, outdoor season, and club stuff in the middle? Um, so my recommendations for that would be there's always going to be a month or two break somewhere. So that's more of an off season. Or if you have a tournament that's really important coming up, maybe two weeks away, mm -hmm. then start being off or start training on season leading up to it. So right. I always give myself about two weeks of off season training uh, to progress into on season training. So that way I'm really not fatiguing myself too much. I'm allowing my body to fully recover. Um, and to focus on archery. Yeah. Because archery yeah. requires a lot of strength and mental acuity. So <clears throat> if you're spending too much energy in your strength and conditioning program, I personally feel like it would detract from archery. But if you're not spending enough time, then you're also going to be um, detracting from archery. Yes. Yeah. So there's a, a delicate balance. Yes, absolutely. And, and especially like say 
you know, indoor season is not super important, at least in our world here in the United States. Our indoor wasn't as important as outdoors because obviously the Olympics and that's where all of our funding comes from. So indoor season, I'd still treat it as off season, you know. That makes sense. Ultimately going to tournaments to appease sponsors to make sure uh, competition still feels fresh and I know how to deal with it. But otherwise, and have fun. well, yeah, that's too. Like Vegas <laughs> is definitely fun. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's three, two to three days a week, depending on each individual person. I would never do it two days in a row. I always give at least one day in between. So like if it's three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, it Tuesday, really, Thursday. yeah, it really depends on your training cycle and how many days a week you're willing to practice. So something that is a great reference to this is a book that we wrote together. It's called Training for Archery. It actually takes and breaks down how I train for the sport, not only how many arrows a day to shoot and how to predict a peak at a tournament, but also when to interject uh, exercise and how to build a full training plan. Right. So if you're interested in that book, we'll put a link in a card. We'll put a card at the top, plus we'll put a link in the description below on where you can find it on uh, my website as well as on Amazon in case you're a Prime member as well. So the next thing we need to talk about is how many sets and reps to do for each type of exercise. I was always recommended between eight and 12 reps and then from three to four sets. Obviously you get to pick and choose. Some days you do maybe, like some days I would do four sets of 10 and then the next day I'd do three sets of eight. So it- It's still within that range. Yeah, it keeps, keeps things fresh. You know, some days you can give a bit more, some days you can't, you know, and, and you can change that depending on your individual feel, and I, I recommend to do so as well. But when we talk about core, I always recommend a minimum of 15 reps. So not just eight to 12, do a minimum of 15, and if it's a single-sided exercise, like, um, let's see, alternating, Russian yeah, like Russian twists, you do 15 per side, so a total of 30. Or you could do it for time. Like if we're doing a plank exercise, we do that for a full minute. Obviously you can't do 15 reps of a plank, um, or Heather likes to do, instead of doing reps during a uh, specific core exercise, you like to do what? So I do Tabatas. So a Tabata is a timed sequence. So say it's um, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off, or 40 seconds on, 10 seconds off. And it will just be as many reps that I can get with correct form in that time slot. Um, and then I have a overall amount of time, say eight minutes that I'm doing, or 10 minutes or 12 minutes. Um, depending on what level of torture I feel like giving myself. So you wouldn't do three sets of 40. It would just be yeah. maybe 40 so, on, 10 off for eight minutes. Right, so okay. maybe it's Russian twist for 40 seconds and then a plank for 10 seconds and then um, V-ups for 40 seconds and then a plank for 10 seconds and then windshield wipers. And so just going on in this like um, circuit, basically. Great. So. We've had a couple of questions about why to do between eight to 12 reps. Um, we found, or at least I've found as a shooter, that it kind of is that balance between strength, endurance, and um, mass. So not gaining too much mass, but still gaining a lot of strength and gaining endurance as well. Right. So it's kind of that happy medium of not getting too big for the sport of archery because it's, it's really difficult. When we're only working out two to three days a week for 20 to 40 minutes, you're not gonna get big. I mean, most people will go to the gym, even if you go to the gym for, you know, five, six days a week and you put in your, like what we're recommending, 20 to 40 minutes to get big, you would have to do a lot more than that. Yeah. Or um, do 40 minutes of just bicep curls. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which we don't do. So right. it's so not going to happen. Chances of getting too big for archery, it's pretty slim. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the details of what type of exercises to do, just a couple of samples. But just so you guys know, we are working to create an entire library of every exercise that we do recommend. And eventually we'll be getting into designing um, some sort of plans for people. So how to work out, how to strengthen for the sport of archery. Actually, Heather's going to be doing that. I'm not gonna be doing that because that's definitely not my bread and butter there. Well, I mean, it's really interesting how we're planning on doing it. It's a lot like when we go on location somewhere and um, do private like strength programs where I watch the archer shoot and then by, you know, not the form of actually how they're shooting their bow, but looking at their bodies and looking for weaknesses. So if a hip juts out, well, that gives me information that there is something going on and weakness in the hips and the core, or if that bow arm 
rises up like how do we keep that down through strength so I'm pretty excited about that and I, I think it'll be a lot of fun yeah so the the idea is to basically we'll have people will be submitting a video of them shooting she'll mm -hmm. review it come up with a, a plan for them and how to fix some faults and then uh, she'll reference all of the exercises that we're gonna be building in a library so Eventually, we'll have a library of every exercise that we recommend, things that are useful, breaking down each exercise into how to do each step. So this, this video is not going to cover all of the exercises that we're going to recommend here in detail. We'll show you them really quick as like B-roll footage while we're talking about them just briefly. Um, but anyway, that's the plan. So it, it's coming. So with that said, let's just get into the exercises. So I always started with a leg exercise first. Obviously, after we warm up, you know, you have to do a proper warm up, which we will do a video on warming up specifically for strength training. Um, and also we're gonna be doing one specific for archery. So anyway, start with legs. So there's like two different types of exercises that we haven't covered yet that I like to do. I like to do RDLs, um, which focuses more on obviously legs, but a lot of hamstring work mm -hmm. and deadlifts. So what do a, what a deadlifts cover? So deadlift is the entire posterior chain. So it's everything from hamstrings to glutes to low back to upper back. So it's a really conclusive yeah. exercise yeah. for the posterior. Yep. So, um, and also really quick before we get too much further, everything that we suggest always, I, I always suggest doing it with free weights. So free weights means it's a weight that isn't attached to a guide. So not on a Smith right. machine, um, I don't even really like cable machines all that much other than really complex exercises or rows or rows. like pull downs. Right. It's great for rows, great for like serratus pull downs, mm -hmm. um, great for overhead pull downs, that type of stuff or like wood choppers and that type of thing. I love doing cable machines with that type of stuff but in general when we're doing a weight and we say do an overhead press, we want you to have the ability to stabilize and control the weight because right. in archery it's all about stability. So we might as well, if we're gonna be doing these exercises, you might as well do it to enhance your shooting ability as well. Right, Yeah. Yeah. to get the most out of each exercise. Exactly. So RDLs and deadlifts are great leg exercise. So you do three to four sets of eight to 12 reps, and then we go into a push exercise. So before you go into that, we like to say, make sure you're resting uh, between yeah. exercises. Yep. So there's a lot of benefits to that, one is, um, you give your body a little time to recover, replenish some glycogen in the muscle to allow it to continue to work. Um, but taking that maybe two to three minutes after each uh, set, and the set is your eight to 12, um, before your next set is, is really valuable. Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Now it's time to check your Instagram, you know, post to it, <laughs> whatever people do these days in gyms, which is awful, by the way. Uh, so you do those things. You gotta, you gotta wait, like she said, optimal rest, two to three minutes, two to three give minutes. or take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have that patience, but I try. <laughs> anyway, so then we move into a press. So a press would be something like a, uh, a regular bench, yeah, a, a press or a push. Mm -hmm. So like a bench press is great. Again, uh, free weights. So you have to stabilize as you're going through your full range of motion. Um, so, but when you say free weights, are you also okay with like an Olympic bar or yeah. do you just want dumbbells? Yeah, I'm okay with an Olympic bar because an Olympic bar, again, you're still stabilizing, stabilizing it. But don't do it on a Smith machine like a lot of people do in gyms. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, a lot of gyms out there only have Smith machines True. because of safety. But typically there are dumbbells available. Yes, exactly. So. so you could do a regular, you could do dumbbell bench press. Or the next exercise that I was going to recommend was the alternating dumbbell bench press. So. You can see that as I am alternating, I'm alternating and keeping one dumbbell up the whole time. I'm not keeping one dumbbell against my chest as I'm pressing the other one. So uh, you can do varying differences and exercises and even within those you can do incline and decline. I ne never did incline because I have issues with my shoulders and I'd kind of suggest most archers to stay away from archer, incline. Uh, I would recommend staying away from yeah. incline or yeah. decline. We'll, we'll cover some of that stuff in the future as far as why to avoid certain things like that. Um, but definitely if you're doing a press, neutral grip is best. Try not to flare out, just keep your elbows more towards your inside. It'll help protect your shoulders for archery. Right. So, And then after a press um, or a push, we then do a pull. So we've already covered a body pull in the uh, video that we've already covered. 
If you'd like to see that, there'll be a link in the description below as well. We'll put a card at the top um, where you can find that video. But in addition to a body pull is a regular pull up and then also a... And if you ahead. can't do a regular pull up, there are many assist bands that True. you can get and I personally like those. Um, you know. They're fun to play with regardless, you know, so like... And not all of us can do pull-ups. Yeah, that's so. true. So, you know, <laughs> so assisted pull-ups are things. nice, and even, mm -hmm. like, even though I can do regular pull-ups, it's nice to do assisted pull-ups from time to time because I can do a lot more reps. It's it's definitely feels like it's uh, strengthening different areas because there's different loads at different heights. So it just... Sure. It helps confuse my system so I don't plateau. Um, so in addition to a pull-up is a stretch band row. So it's very simple, pretty straightforward. Um, and if you, you don't have to do it with a stretch band, you can do it with a cable pull machine if you've got one of those or the access for those. Um, you know, just about everybody in the sport of archery has some sort of stretch band and a lot of gyms have stretch bands available too. Very true. And then we hit core. So core is different. Remember we said to do- um, 15 reps. Yeah, 15 reps or, or time, for time. But we do them in a circuit. So explain to us what a circuit is. So a circuit means that you have a series of exercises and you're doing them kind of one after another. So where like the deadlift, we were saying take two minutes rest after each set. Here we're saying superset those. So you're going to go from, you know, each exercise, just stack them back to back until you complete the amount. And you can either do, um, you know, like three sets of planks without rest or do your um, Payla fold, alphabets, planks, whatever you're doing, stack those together as one set and then come back and do it again as another set. So would you do them in rapid succession and keep going or? I personally would. Okay. Um, I always like to do it as a burnout. So okay. I'm trying to exhaust my muscles as much as possible. I save core for the end. Uh, but you can do it so that you have your first circuit, you take your two minute rest, you have your second circuit of core, you take your two minute rest, and then you have your third circuit or however many circuits you choose to do. Um, yeah, that's what I like to do mm -hmm. just because by the time I've already been on the range for eight hours and I've gone through all these exercises, I'm pretty exhausted. So that okay. extra two minutes allows me to at least really focus and give it my all for those last few exercises instead of just going through the motions or breaking my form or whatever else. Well, so, I definitely don't yeah, obviously ever don't want you to form. break your form no. or just go through the mo yeah. motions. But you know, my goal is always just burn out to the point of exhaustion yeah. at the end. Um, which could be fun. Which too. I like. But, but she's kind of sick. Yeah. <laughs> so. so the core exercises <laughs> that we recommend, she already kind of covered them really quick, but a, a payoff hold, super good for stability, especially in the wind. Right, and yeah. it's um, a twisting exercise. Yeah. So it's just incredibly effective and yeah. my, my favorite exercise for an archer. Yeah, very challenging yet challenging and fun in an easy way. So that's a hold. So that one will be for a time. It's time. Yeah, what do you suggest on that one? A minute? Still? So uh, not usually a minute. Typically we'll do like 30 to 40 seconds on either side because okay. you have to do both sides. Ah, all right. Yeah, so then it's a minute, but it's 30 seconds each side-ish. Sure. Give or take. Cool. Um, then the next thing would be an alphabet, which is basically you just lay on the ground and trace an alphabet with both feet. You have f both feet together and you trace out the entire alphabet in capital letters, um, never letting your feet touch the ground the entire time. I'm trying to keep them about six inches off the ground. Yeah, yeah, very, ch very, very challenging, but very fun and satisfying because you're doing a whole different uh, set of motions instead of just going through the same rep range mm -hmm. uh, over and over again. Okay. And then the last core exercise uh, we'd recommend would be a Superman. So that one would be the 15 uh, rep type thing. And mm -hmm. obviously the alphabet, you wouldn't do 15 alphabets. That's, that would be impossible. So you just trace the whole alphabet. <laughs> one time. <laughs> yeah. And then the, uh, the Superman. So you do 15 Supermans, uh, but all three of those exercises, again, uh, do in a circuit or superset them. So right. go through each three of the exercises, and then you can either take a break and then start again after about two minutes, or just go right through them if you can. Again, three sets, but again, 15 reps or a minute each. And I think with the Supermans, um, the ones that I see you do and also the ones that are my favorite are actually alternating. So yes. it's left leg, right arm, yep. right leg, left yes. arm. So there's variances in all of these exercises and we absolutely will be covering them in the future. Um, so like I said, it's going to be coming. If you have any ideas on how to approach that, 
uh, we'd appreciate it. You comment below if you'd like. Um, if there's any exercises you specifically would love to hear about, do let us know. We have a list that we are going to start assembling. And again, we're going to be doing a library of them. So we'll, we'll have a bunch of upper body stuff, a bunch of uh, pushes, a bunch of pulls, a bunch of leg exercises, a bunch of core exercises, stability exercises. You name it, expand it. There's going to be a ton of videos. So that way when Heather is doing her, uh, you know, archer review videos for more of supplemental type of exercises, we will ref reference our own library of information. So that'll be coming out. And uh, like we said, if, if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button, the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Um, there's a lot of videos coming in the pipeline and you definitely don't want to miss them if you're serious about archery. Thanks for watching and thank you to my Patreon supporters. If you want to become a Patreon supporter or check out books, apparel, and some seminar info, head to jkaminski.com and uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified every time a new video is uploaded. And I appreciate you watching. Thank you again.